Hello, welcome to another edition of the CNA's Opus. My name is Rich, I'm a certified nursing assistant, and I will be your host today, and hopefully I can get a better camera soon. Um, here, uh, I want to take a look at protein domains and try to make better sense out of them. And we were uh, working on the PI3 AKT mTOR pathway. And right here, there again, there's the regulatory portion, which is P85, which we have right here. That's P85. That's the regulatory portion of P8, uh, the, the PI3 kinase enzyme. It regulates it so it just doesn't go off and start activating that pathway wherever it feels like. But these are the protein domains of it. And I underline certain ones for specific reasons because I want to try to make sense of the, uh, the, the protein domains and kind of look for uh, patterns in things. And once this is all done, it'll make it make full circle. So if you just stick with me, uh, we can make full circle here and, and, and it'll make, uh, it should make complete sense. So right here, we have the amino terminus. Then right here, we have a sarcomology three domain. Then next to it, we have the proline rich domain. And that's no mistake right there. Uh, within the one protein, within this one regulatory protein, um, they, are, they are next to each other. And that's not by mistake. Next, we have break breakpoint cluster uh, homology domain, which you don't need, have, need to have to worry about that right now for this video. Uh, but these are only in the P85. P85 has um, uh, smaller subunits that still work perfectly well on the P110 alpha or P110 beta catalytic subunits. They could still work perfectly fine in the smaller subunits which means if you're an evolutionary biologist, you might want to look at why this is still here. This seems to be a region that's becoming um, obsolete. So if you're into evolutionary biology, this might be something that you'd want to look at because P85 right here will extend over to the smaller ones. These one, This is P55 alpha, P55 gamma, and P50 uh, alpha, which means the, prote the protein domains within this are smaller. We're just, with P85, you're just adding on that other portion right here. This would be the whole thing with P85. With the smaller ones, you cut that portion off, but it still works perfectly fine as to regulate, regulate, regulating the P110 alpha or P110 uh, catalytic subunits. So for some reason, that portion is becoming obsolete. Um, but again, uh, I'm going to move on from that and just again, go on with uh, P55 alpha, uh, P55 gamma and P P50 alpha, which again, are me measured in kilodaltons. So uh, the weight's getting smaller. So therefore, the, there's going to be less protein domains. And again, here I have underlined protein-rich domain, and then again, sarcomology domain, and then there's an intermediate sarcomology domain, and then there's C, N, and C. It's kind of like an, uh, an amino terminus and uh, uh, a C terminus here for the sarc. So this is uh, C, sarcomology domain, and then of the entire... Um, protein, we have the C-terminus right there. So then moving on from that, uh, just remember those underlying portions there because that should make sense here. So this is receptor tyrosine kinase and two ligands bind, whatever whatever ligand you, you want to choose, say it's uh, epidermal growth factor or uh, human epidermal growth factor, um, to what, whatever ligand you want, put it there. And receptor tyrosine kinase will dimerize right here. It'll be dimerization. And down here, autophosphorylation will occur where they're going to share phosphate groups with one another and become activated. And when they become activated, 
uh, there's a lot of things that can happen, but one thing that can happen is it can recruit proteins. And again, uh, we're seeing a recurring theme here. Down here, this is a different protein. This is growth factor receptor binding protein 2, um, which has a protein domain in it that's sarcomology 2. And sarcomology, uh, sarcomologies are very good at binding to uh, phosphotyrosines. They're very good at binding to phosphotyrosines. And this one in particular likes to bind to the underside for some reason. So I have it right there for a reason. You, you, um, anyway, moving on from that. Uh, over here is sarcomology 3. And again, I have sarcomology the sarc underlined right there. And the sarcomology is bound to a protein-rich region in uh, something called SOS. And SOS is a, a, a guanosine nucleotide exchange factor. So you'll see what that means in a second. But the important thing to point out here is, again, it's binding to a proline-rich region with SARC. And if you look back here, underlying regions in this very same protein, this is not a different protein, is protein rich uh, domain right next to SARC homology domain in the one in one protein. Same thing is going to happen when it's two separate proteins, SARC homology three and protein rich uh, region. So that's, uh, once that binds there like this, that'll become activated and the, um, the nucleotide exchange, uh, the guanine nucleotide exchange factor sauce will cleave away and go over to um, usually a G, monomer a G monomeric protein, RAS, and that'll start the, um, the, the MAPK um, pathway. So over here, MAPK. MAPK is mitogen activated protein kinase cascade. Um, excuse me for a second. So a mitogen is anything that works for cell division or mitosis. And uh, uh, um, the MAPK or RAS, RAF, MAC, ERK pathway uh, are for transcription which means it's downstream it's to make the messenger rna as were the pi3 akt mTOR pathway is for upstream that's for translating the messenger rna into protein so one's going downstream and, and the other's going upstream um so sauce gets there and it weakens the bond between um, guanosine diphosphate right here, which is the off state. And that comes out and goes in the cytoplasm. And G GTP, which is guanosine triphosphate, is taken up in to RAS, which will be the on state. So now this GTP in RAS is in the on state. Now down here is RAF, which is the next step. But RAF is not activated by RAS. Uh, RAF, RAF has, at, as, right, as of right now, has 13, um, 13 uh, protein residues that it can bind to. Um, it, it has, that can be phosphorylated. It has 13 uh, protein residues that could get phosphorylated. And out of these 13 known ones right now, um, some are activatory ones or excitatory ones, and some are inhibitory ones. So out of those 13, you can think of them like transistors kind of, or like a, a light switch. When they get phosphorylated, it's either switching it on or it's switching it off out of those 13, like a transistor, so to speak. Um, this 1433 uh, protein right here is 
inhi an, an inhibitory protein, but that's not what's thought to inhibit it right now. Even though it comes over and binds to it, it's thought it's pointing in the direction in the literature right now that certain um, certain uh, protein residues that get phosphorylated are acting more as switches that are on and off. So this 1433 inhibitory protein that comes over to bind here um, is kind of, even if you took this out, uh, a RAF, as far as the literature is pointing to right now, would still be in an off state. Would still be in an off state. Out of the 13 known t uh, protein residues that there are, again, they're kind of uh, being phosphorylated and acting more as uh, switches, as on and off. These inhibitory proteins are uh, more like the icing on the cake there. At least, at least with RAF. I'm only speaking of RAF right now. Uh, but that probably goes the same for um, other proteins as well. I just don't have as much evidence for that yet. So moving on from that, again, we have the RAS, once it's in the on state of GTP, it's going to recruit um, the RAF and the 1433 protein up to the phospholipid bilayer. So it brings it to this specific region right here. And within this specific region, um, there's an abundance of phosphatase, uh, phosphatase pro protein 2A. And phosphatase protein 2A is a, uh, is a phosphatase. It's an enzyme that's going to clip off uh, phosphate groups. So it clips off phosphate groups. And since it's in this vicinity and it's recruited by RAS, that's what RAS's job was, uh, RAS doesn't activate it like that. Phosphatase protein 2, A, first comes in and cleaves off these, um, phosph these phosphate groups right here. Once those are cleaved off, the uh, inhibitory protein of 1433 comes off as well. Then RAF is able to, to bind to the, act, uh, the, the activated GTP. But in order, here you can see, but in order for um, RAF to, get tru uh, to truly get activated here uh, by RAS, I'm sorry, I don't have it spelt in right there, but that's RAS. Uh, now that that inhibitory protein is gone and those inhibitory. Uh, um, uh, uh, phosphotyrosines are cleaved off. It'll bind right there. Now you have a tyrosine residue right here that's available for phosphorylation. And this is the important part right here to make full circle. It's phosphorylated by a non-tyrosine re receptor tyrosine uh, kinase. A non-tyrosine uh, receptor uh, or tyrosine kinase. And that is one that's floating in the cytoplasm of the cell. And it is SARC. So all those homology domains that you're pointing out are conserved, consistent protein um, polypeptide chains um, that are consistent that were found originally in SARC that are now found in these other proteins like here, growth factor receptor binding protein two, and back here, the P85 regulatory subunit, uh, uh, subunit of uh, PI3 kinase. There it is again and again. Uh, the reason uh, the proline rich domain and the SARC being next to each other in the same protein is um, not a coincidence. And you can see that 
different proteins, uh, protein rich domains. These are two different ones. There's your protein rich domain and there's your sarcomology again in two different proteins, not in the same protein uh, um, linked together by uh, uh, different protein domains. These are two separate proteins. So within the same protein, you could have it and or it could be interlinking between different proteins. And again, when, when you do um, the protein domains like this, it's not in a linear structure like that at all when, when you're doing protein domains. This is just kind of like a, uh, um, to show uh, what's in it. And, but it folds, uh, proteins fold up in very bizarre ways. This is just to show kind of where things are at, but it's not a linear structure at all. Um, and, but what I really wanted to end with was the SARC uh, non-receptor tyrosine kinase right there because all those other homology domains were originally found right there, um, I believe in the Rouse um, sarcoma virus in the chicken way back when. And that's old school. That's old school. So that's it. Rich, CNA. See you later.